Okay, so today we're going to discuss the whole narrative of the strong and independent black woman and the woes of being independent. <clears throat> a lot of black women are strong and independent because they feel like they don't want to capitulate to any type of patriarchy. They, don't, they want to capitulate to a white male patriarchy, but they don't want to build their own black male patriarchy because they want things to say, stay the same as they are right now. See, the whole black community is in disarray right now. The only thing that is basically keeping up, keeping up the black community and keeping it together is the black men that are holding it together, which are the sensible, educated, so-called educated lames. So, yeah, black women don't want to capitulate to black male patriarchy. The whole black community is basically a matriarchy, guys. It's not built up of a patriarchy because the women don't want to capitulate to any type of patriarchy they don't want to create their own they want to complain about a patriarchy and then they want i mean it's it's confusing because it's a double edged sword it's a, it's a double edged sword you know how type of like you know how it's like uh, both edges of the sword are like you know i mean it's a double edged sword really i mean i'm not completely sure how it all works but it's a double edged sword in the sense that the women want to have a matriarchy in the sense that they want to, you know, do whatever they want. But then at the other end of the spectrum, they want the men to protect them. Even though they're not following the rules and guidelines that the men are setting. Because they are the leaders of the community. And if you're the leader of the community, you set the rules and guidelines for the women to follow. And then if the women follow them, then they will be more protected. Because you can't always protect a woman in the sense of you always being in the same proximity as her. Okay, you're not always going to be right next to her when some shit goes down. See, you, you could be at work and then your wife uh, your wife is probably going down to the store to get something. And then she gets harassed by a bunch of niggas and they do something to her. So what I'm basically saying is that the women need to capitulate to black male patriarchy in order to be fully protected. Okay, but let me take a little break. I'll be back in a bit. Okay, I'm back. So let's get into the article real quick and let's talk about how the article presents itself and we'll analyze it real quick. So the strong black woman stereotype regards the black woman as a blank slate void of human emotion with a superhuman character. That basically means that the black woman, black woman is valued for her strength. But see, there's a great quote that I heard from Amiri, Amiri Browner is that there's no female populace that is valued on their strength. They're valued on their femininity. They're not valued on their masculinity. They're valued on their femininity. Okay? They're not valued on their masculine strength. Okay? However, through the intersections of race, gender, and sex, this persona is detrimental to the well-being and existence of the black woman as it disabled, disables her emotions and distorts her humanity in a way useful to a colonial agenda. Not to mention the historical establishment of mental health institutions has colonial roots in perpetuating the stereotype. Perpetuating the strong black woman independent stereotype. That's the stereotype I think that grew from feminism more so than anything else. Because feminism promoted the ideology of black women being strong and independent. And in them being strong and independent, <coughs> sorry, in them being strong and independent, they feel like that they can do anything a man can do. They feel like they're equal to a man they feel like they can do anything a man can do like even the sexual even the sexual um uh the sexual game like the whole the whole uh, the whole notion of a man being able to sleep with many different women but then if women do it i think they feel like they get emotions into it so them engaging in the whole casual sex routine is not something that they would like to do just as, because you know the sexual market is different for men and women you know a woman can't do everything a man can do so you know but then the thing is feminism taught women that oh you're controlling your, you're in control of your body you can be lib sexually liberated just like just as much as the men you should go out and have sex as many as have sex with as many men as you want to so that plays a part too but ultimately it's black women's fault for being hoodwinked They've been hoodwinked and led astray by the feminism movement because whilst white women were preaching to black women to be gender first, white women were preaching to white men that they were race first. So 
while they're going over to their men and telling them that they're race first and they're actually for the white race, white women are telling you guys to be gender first. And you guys are just going along with that shit just like sheep. And you're alienating your own men, your own male counterparts. And then you want to tell me about how black men are not protecting, protecting and providing for black women? Are you kidding me? Who the hell do you think you are? Because when you've been going through the 1960s, the 1970s, the 1980s, the 1990s and the 2000s, denigrating your own men and calling them, telling them they ain't shit, then you are perpetuating that stereotype that you always want to go against. So let's go into the article once again. In addition, the white supremacist patriarchy may change itself by painting the black woman as too masculine by virtue of her strength. Just like what I said, no female populace is valued on her strength. Uh, to still be alive despite all the violence it has committed onto her and her people. This essay critically explores the trope of the strong black woman and what the myth of independence means to the racist white supremacist construction of the unbreakable black woman. So black women have been shown to be too masculine. They don't have any type of femininity about them. That is why they're not seen as attractive. This is why black women are the bottom of the barrel in terms of attractiveness and desirability. Because when you compare them to white women and Asian women, Asian women are more submissive and they have a very feminine uh, culture to where they are taught to be submissive and to you know cook clean for their husband while the husband is out working, okay? It just speaks to the whole dynamic that black women have just been so brainwashed and hoodwinked to the point that there is no return. There is no, to the point of no return, actually, to the point of no return, not to the point there is no return. But, I mean, you guys should really read this essay, but I'm just giving you guys an example and I'm giving you guys, you know, an analysis of the abstract but you guys should really go over and watch and probably watch a couple of Obsidian's videos. I'd recommend Obsidian. I'd recommend Organic the Illionaire. And I'd probably recommend who else? Who else? Would I, I mean, Amiri Browner of The Great Liberators. I'd definitely recommend him. Even though he used to simp before for the women. And I mean, I have, I, I have a problem with that. But I guess he's come over to the light now. And he's starting to see the light. And starting to see how full of shit the women are. Once they, you know, obviously that's another video. But the women tried to get him fired from his job. All right, and that's basically what I was gonna say. Um, in conclusion of this video, black women are really seen as very masculine and they're not seen as women anymore. They're seen as these strong, unbelievably strong women that are just masculine to the point of they can fight a man. They feel like, seriously, I mean, if you guys look back to that Austin Sheffield guy, when he was fighting that black woman, he beat her up like she was a man, okay? And he beat her like a man because of the media portraying black women as strong and independent. But the media plays into it a bit, but then also black women play into it a little bit because they feel like they want to be strong and independent. They've been saying it for decades, guys. So even though the media promotes it, you're not going to sit up there and just listen to whatever the media tells you, okay? Okay, that's not like, I'm still going to hold you accountable for just being brainwashed, okay? You should be able to fight the brainwashing. You shouldn't just get indoctrinated. I mean, I guess, okay, I guess they're weak mentally, all right? But that's all I was gonna say. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Tell me what you guys think down in the comment section below and make sure to uh, subscribe to the channel. I'm out, peace.